What's going on, folks? This week, I wanted to give you guys a little preview of the TFTH After Show, which is simply our Patreon-exclusive version of the Tales from the Hood, where we follow up on emails we've gotten in the past for updates, read emails that were inspired from stories from past episodes, and just go a little bit further in depth with our listeners and their stories. So I hope you enjoy. Again, this will be a little bit of a different format. It's just me. And if you like it, feel free to join our Patreon. This will be something that I'll be doing. Affirmativemurder at gmail.com. Feel free to email back in with updates, follow-ups, pictures, videos, audio submissions, elaborating on things that we have questions about. We welcome it all. Affirmativemurder at gmail.com. Maybe do like a Tales from the Hood updates, Tales from the Hood after show, something like that, so we can differentiate. But anyway, enjoy. Yeah, obvious. We got a problem here. And it's more than just Alvin Stream and Punisher. When life begins to suck, who's reporting it? Luckily, you got two friends who you won't forget. Coming live, Alvin and friend on survival. Laughing non stop, case drops on a cycle. Louder than intrusive thoughts off an iPhone. How they make the world seem bright with the lights off? AFs, it might as well stay up. Lies being told like that dinosaur BS. Magnifying glass to the ground if they don't see us. Having the time, roasting your favorite pizza. Bougie ain't an option, it's the way. Make it to the grave, that move into the place. You already know when they take the case. Laugh the pain away, it's a fire in Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome to the Tales from the Hood After Show. I am here to follow up on emails that we've received on Tales from the Hood that answer questions, sometimes maybe give us more questions, blow our minds, and maybe just continue to build up this ever-expanding community. On our very first episode, we're going to take it back a few months to a listener named Whitney who emailed into Tales from the Hood to tell us about uh, her experience as an exotic dancer where uh, one of her regulars was killed or gunned down outside of, a, outside of the club. And Fran and myself discussed what are the do's and don'ts of a strip club attendee and whitney did the job we asked her to do and she sent us in a list and i'm going to read that list right now so thank you whitney shout out to you so the email reads hey it's whitney sorry for the late response guys i hope i don't disappoint so we're going to start with do's these are the do's and don'ts of strip clubs do tip them the entertainers do not get an hourly wage or benefits or a 401k or pto do Allow them to touch you, but not vice versa. No touchy, no touch. Do bring or buy liquor. Most topless clubs have a bar, fully nude clubs or BYOB. Do know your limits when drinking or don't and get hustled because it's all about that hustle. Do buy dances. I mean, that's a kind of a given. Why are you here if you're just not spending money? Do bring your friends that enjoy strip clubs. The more the merrier, the more money the dancers make. I get it. I'm following along. These are making sense. Do bring your cool wife or girlfriend. We like women too, as long as they're not the jealous type. Whitney, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Do be a regular. <laughs> Teach their own. Come visit at least once a week. It's nice to see a familiar face. Do take a shower prior to coming. There are enough germs floating around. Let's decrease the chances of staff infection. Entertainers have to enter many personal space bubbles. They want to twerk in a safe environment. You know what? And I fully understand that. Who doesn't want to twerk in a safe environment? Do wash your hands. And that's not just post-COVID. A lot of y'all are revealed your nasty selves when this COVID thing kicked off about, I guess now I wash my hands before I leave the bathroom. You should have always been doing that. Do make it rain. I mean, come on now. Like She specified because that's crazy. In my mind, I'm thinking of like when Rick Ross does it. I don't have that kind of money. Um, rain means throwing a minimum of $100 in $1 bills in the air above your current entertainer. So that's making it rain. Okay, so that's not crazy. $100 and that's a hefty knot. That's a nice uh, overcast. You know, that's, that's, that's a little torrential downpour, a little light, little light action, nothing crazy. I want to make it a uh, tsunami. You know, I, don't, I wonder how much that is. Whitney, maybe follow up. Let me, let me know what that is in increments of, you know, $1 bills. What's a tsunami? Is that like 100000 You ever been tsunamied on? Moving on. Do hire entertainers and their security for private shows and parties outside of the club. That way they get more of the money with less of the kickback. I get, I get what you're, at least I think that's the logic of that, right? I mean, you want to work. That's, yeah, more money, more hustle, more life. Do get consent to smack butt cheeks. Crucial. Might be the most crucial on the do's list. Consent is key. Major key. Consent is key. Get that consent to smack those cheeks. We're going to move along to don'ts. Don't. Bring your jealous wife or girlfriend for obvious reasons. Don't get sloppy drunk and not spend a crazy amount of money. 
Because, I mean, you want them to get drunk and spend that money, I would assume. But are you saying, don't get drunk and then and then spend a bunch of money and then regret it? Don't really know that one's confusing. I don't know which side to take on it, but it's one of those sides, I'm, a, I'm sure. Don't come in if you're broke. This is a general rule of thumb for me in life. Don't come to the kickback if you're broke. Don't come out to the dinner party if you're broke. Don't come to the movies if you're broke. It just makes everybody uncomfortable. We have to, you know, now, inc- you know, pay for you or you're sitting there and you're not eating and we all have to go like, are you sure you don't want anything? You have to play a cat mouse game of you being like, no, I'm good. I ate before I came. And then our food comes out and it smells good. And then you're complimenting the food. And then, you know, you ask for a fry or something like that. And then it's just like, hey, man, I'll get you your own food. And then again, no, no, I'm not that hungry. Really? It's cool. I'm fine. Don't go places if you're broke. You know, get your money right. Get your mind right. Pop back out when you got some money to spend. Don't hang out and drink. We are not looking for friends or convo. Damn, okay, I respect it. You know what I'm here to do. I'm not here to be a shoulder for you to cry on. Don't touch below the belt. Ill. Don't touch faces. No little face waterfall come down back your hand. Girl, I can take you away from this life. I would assume that you wouldn't want that. Yes, obviously. Uh, don't touch boobs. No boob honking, ladies or gentlemen. Don't tell the entertainer you don't have to do this or be Captain Save-A-Ho. That's Whitney's words, not mine. Because <laughs> nobody wants to do it. I'm here. I'm here. I know why I'm here. I'm here to make money. Don't fucking tell me I'm too good for this life or whatever goofy shit you want to say to me. Shut the fuck up and let me twerk on you or get out. Don't date an entertainer and then tell her she should stop dancing. At one point, I was dating a guy I met from the club. I had stopped dancing and got a regular clothed job. Money got low and I decided to try the club again. He then told me he thought I was better than them dumb bitches. I didn't go back again because money wasn't as easy as it used to be because by this time, ass shots became popular and my natural body was not the preference, but I would have just to spite him if it weren't. Don't sit with money on the table all night. Often, guys who are trying to just get attention will sit with money on the table for the whole night, then go home without spending a dime. Oh, the old 22 fake out, you dirty rascals. Don't get a dance from the bartender or waitresses. They'll do it, but the entertainers definitely don't approve. Don't request a song without tipping with it. Don't request a song and it doesn't fit the vibe of the club. You can't twerk to Phoebe Bridgers. And I would wholeheartedly disagree with you on that, Whitney, but... That's a conversation for another day. Don't ask the entertainer for their real name. I have an alias for a reason. I am Cinnamon. Don't start a fight. Yeah, cool. Yeah, definitely. Don't fuck the vibe ups with fist fights. And don't record or take photos. And I would assume that, that that's probably a bendy rule because, you know, if Floyd Mayweather comes in there, he can take as many pictures as he wants. But also, maybe Floyd Mayweather, his etiquette of strip clubs is so high that he knows not to take pictures. Also, he's... He's done the strip club life a thousand times. This is nothing new to him, making it rain, making it tsunami. So it's like almost like uh, the girls who get it, get it. And the girls who don't, don't, you know, like, you know, so actually I take back what I said. Like if you have the money and the etiquette to be in a strip club often and be liked and having a good time that you feel is worth filming, you know, not to film it because you're at a strip club. And if you've never done that before and you're all excited because this girl's ass is in my face, you're going to be the one to take the picture because you never had it done before. And you're going to be the one to fuck the vibe up. And the bouncer's going to grab you by the back of your shirt, the bottom of your pants, throw you out of the door like Jazzy Jeff. And then she also left a list of random things that I'm going to read through just for fun. Shits and gigs, huh? Celebrity sightings. Here we go. And this, yeah, here we go. Yeah, here we go. I once took a picture with the rapper Eve on a disposable camera. The pic never got developed. So then did it, did it ever even happen? Huh? You know, we don't know. The world will never know. Also, the strongest man in the world, Mark Henry, I saw him push a girl off his lap. I avoided him like the plague. Okay. Oh, here's one interesting one. Oil is a no-no. Oil makes the pole slippery and it could cause injury. These are, these, are, these are acrobats at the end of the day, folks. Let's keep that in mind. When doing pole tricks, you grip it with your skin and pressure. With oil, you'll just be slipping. And the other entertainers will hate you because then when they get on the stage, they'll slip or trip because of all the oily residue. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Whitney goes on to also say, you can't judge a book by its cover. In my opinion, there isn't a way to know who is or isn't going to spend money. 
Plenty of men come in dressed nice and don't spend. They're there fishing for a new girlfriend. There are also men who come in straight from work, smelling musty, and ready to spend a roll of $100 bills. Can't judge a book by its stripper. Being an entertainer is expensive. You have to buy hair, nails, makeup, outfits, shoes, fragrances, therapy. (laughs) And whatever your vice is, coke, weed, liquor, ecstasy, meth, etc. On a daily basis. That one got real. Real fun. Next one. Drinking helps you learn pole tricks. Liquid courage gives you the confidence to try something new and is usually the main ingredient in attempting a new trick. Okay, yeah, yeah. Get all sauced up and start flipping around on a pole. Yeah, I'm into it. Whitney also says, I worked at a club that was a hole in the wall, and at this strip club, anything goes. There were actual VIP rooms with doors that lock that you could go into. You paid in 30-minute increments. Prostitution happened. I had a friend, well, a coworker, because we didn't see each other outside of the club, who was an actual hoe. Oh, shit. Okay. All right. This is not PC, but I will keep reading because these are Whitney's words, who is a woman in the industry, and she can speak how she wants to. She was from Memphis. At one point, she was directed by her pimp to try to recruit me. I declined. I would work at the club because the money was easy. Because the club had loose rules, they also hired whoever wanted to work. Most of the girls were there to prostitute. And most of the girls were unattractive, so I would make all my money just going from stage to stage. I didn't have to give lap dances because the customers would just follow me around and throw money on the stage. My main club, the one I wrote about initially, was the stereotypical club you see in black movies. Hip-hop music and big booty black women of every shade. I liked this club because it was fun. There was a lot of competition here, so I had to work hard for my money. I also worked at a predominantly white club. This club is about the throat chakra. You need to know how to talk. The customers in there just want to have a conversation or at least have one before they get any dances. I'm not a talker. I can write all day, dance all day, but convos are my Achilles heel. There was a black guy who would come in and love to give away money to the black dancers. He would compliment us and talk about beautiful black queens, but would only receive dances from a white girl. I was always confused on whether we should be offended by it or not. I decided not to be since I made $500 off him just by drinking champagne and being black. (laughs) Right on. We should all live that life, Whitney. You know, you're my hero. I fuck with that. I wish we could all make $500 just off drinking champagne and being black. The wildest thing I've ever seen was a girl smoke a cigarette with her vagina. (laughs) Okay, yeah, hell yeah. And lastly, your entertainer may be on her period, but you'll never know. When an entertainer is on her period, she will insert a tampon and cut off the string. This will most likely only happen in an all-nude club because at the topless clubs, they can just tuck it in. All right, good to know. I hope that, you know, nobody's ever gotten, like, toxic shock or something like that from losing the tamp up in there. Fucking blood poisoning. Anyway, Whitney, thank you so much for that amazing email. Uh, She finished things off with saying, if you have any more questions, suggestions, or requests, let me know. Whitney, we will do. You are officially our strip club correspondent, and we don't take that job lightly. Talk to you soon, lady. Affirmative Murder is brought to you by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Fun fact, March is actually National Nutrition Month, and HelloFresh makes it easy to choose delicious, dietitian approved meals. Simply look for the dietitian win tag on their menu choices for meals under 700 calories and with one-third less sodium. HelloFresh makes it easy to eat what you love. Customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides or even adding protein to a veggie dish. And now, you can even upgrade for organic chicken or organic ground beef on select meals. And folks, spring is ever approaching. And for me personally, when it gets warm, I like to start traveling around a little bit. And it's hard to stay on a grocery store schedule. So it's nice to not even have to think about it. I come home from a trip. I got some meals at my doorstep ready to be cooked with no thought about nutrition and everything because that's already been pre-planned and thought out for me. I'm eating healthy without putting any thought into it. Life hack. Just go to HelloFresh.com slash AMP60 and use the code AMP60 for 60% off plus free shipping. 
Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash A-M as in Martha, P-60. And use the promo code AMP60 for 60% off plus free shipping. In the wise words of Ellie Goulding, what are you waiting for? You're letting all this good food pass you by. So sign up today. That's HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Our next follow-up email is kind of an adjacent follow-up email from a story that was sent to us about somebody that was working at a Target and a, and a fire broke out next to a fire station, and they came and put a fire out. Well, we got an email from a listener named Jade, and that story actually sparked something in their mind about a story that happened to them, and so I'm going to read that story right now. Thanks again, Jade, for following up, and I'm happy that that story inspired you to write in. And this email goes, hi, guys. I finally have a tale for you. The fire in the Sonic story sparked a memory for me from when I was 16 years old working at McDonald's. This is a story about why you should never, ever, ever work off the clock, ever. So, set the scene. It's 2009, I'm 16, and I'm at my first real job, McDonald's. There were some characters who worked there, including a man whose entire personality was liking Daft Punk and being an absolute creep. A manager who constantly asked me to sell my ADHD medicine to him. And another creep who years later tried to get me to date him while he was in prison for rape. No, sir. Anyways, sadly, this happened to a really great manager who really worked hard to make sure the store was perfect. Her name was Amelda, and she was born to work in fast food. I, don't, I, I guess that's a compliment. Um, I'm going to move on. One day she was working off the clock which, like I said, you should never do. And in the store, we had some JKS electrical work with surge protectors hanging from the ceiling with cords plugged into them, dropping to the ground. On the ground, they were duct taped to the floor to whatever they were powering. Amilda tripped on the cords running up some cup sleeves, ripping up all the duct tape, pulling all the cords out of the surge protector and pulling the surge protector down from the ceiling. Sparks went everywhere. Luckily, no fire happened, but Amelda fell to the ground and wasn't moving. Amelda had electrical burns up her arms, ooh, as well as a broken ankle. Oh, she could not claim workers' comp because she wasn't on the clock. She ended up having to sue our franchise for not fixing electrical problems, but even still, that took years. Never work off the clock. Now I work at Starbucks, and I tell all my baristas the same thing. Love you guys, Jade. Jade, thank you for that little update. That is really sad what happened to Imelda. And yeah, never work off the clock. I agree. Um, nobody's getting free labor out of me ever. And we're going to finish things off with one last email from a listener who was inspired by another email from a different episode. This has been really fun to go and dig through these updates. Please keep them coming. If you've written in before, we'd love to hear from you again. If you've been inspired to tell a story that you've heard on another Tales from the Hood, please write in and explain to us what story that was. So we could give them credit. And let's just keep this going, man. This is really fun. And it's fun to be able to check in with you guys. And I just love interacting with people and, you know, and challenging people to write out some stories. Like, you know, you know, get your brain going. Spin a tail. Spin a yarn. So this last email is from Courtney. It says, Alvin, Fran. Fran is not here. But he's here in spirit. Always. Psst. Sent it up to the sky. Y'all are amazing. I was listening to TFTH 16 with the story from Carol and it set off some memories from my younger days. I've been in the U.S. for eight years, so this feels like a lifetime ago. I used to date a paramedic. I have an affinity for men in uniform, adrenaline, and the macabre. Dose, I used to ride along as a volunteer on the weekends. And I don't know if you did do dose like plus or dose like and, but if you did, I love that and I'm going to steal it. I'm going to do that from now on. Dose, this happened. I like that. I'm a fan. Shout out to you, Courtney. It's not one whole story, but here are some of my favorite calls. First call ever. First time riding along. Called to a stabbing out in a fancy ass expensive area. We show up and there was a sex worker who had been stabbed in the head with a broken bottle. Jesus Christ. Ooh, that is intense. And that is all she has on that. Courtney did not elaborate any further. And I have questions. Was it a champagne bottle? What was it small? Was it big? Was it the, the bottle that you sip from it? It was broken like you see in like a bar fight movie. And so it just has the ridges around it. And then that was stabbed into their head. Was it a shard of glass from any random part of the glass? I have so many questions and you just left me hanging. But that's what the purpose of this podcast is for. So if you hear this, Courtney, follow up with more of these medical stories because I could do these all day. I'm fascinated by gore. Shout out to Dr. Death. Moving on, karmic number two. 
get called to another stabbing, walk in to see the team that arrived earlier than us doing chest compressions on a man lying on the floor. Turns out he was not the stabbing victim. He was the guy that did the stabbing. He ended up passing that night. What? Oh, my God. I'm... These are so many cliffhangers. So what happened to the guy that was stabbed? Who, was, who passed? The guy that they were doing chest compressions? Why were they doing chest compressions on him? Did he just faint from all the excitement from a stabbing? Or what? Courtney, oh, my God. I, I have so many questions. Anyway, this email, you need to, this needs to be a series, you know, talking about ambulance chasing, with, ambulance chasing with Courtney or something. I don't know. Boom. Number three, got called to an MVA or motor vehicle accident where a car had rolled on the side of the highway. Driver flew out of the window. He was flung in front of the car. The car then rolled on top of him. He was unfortunately deceased. Jesus. And number four, double whammy. We had to take a patient to a government hospital, which means it was underfunded, no beds for patients, no PPE, low numbers of staff, really just sad. You'll walk in and there will be bandaged sick people on the floor and have been for hours. We had to hand over. I'm guessing that's some kind of ambulance term, but a paramedic term. Um, I guess that's like give over a patient. But yeah, we had to hand over. And whilst I was walking back to the ambulance, a nurse grabbed me and said, put on gloves and stop this bleeding on a patient that we hadn't brought in. Finish that up, walk outside, and there's a vehicle backing up fast with blood pouring out the back of it. And it turns out that this guy had attacked his cousin with an axe and then brought him to the hospital. That's blood pouring out of it. Jesus Christ. Anyway, that's how I learned to handle things with dark humor. You guys are amazing. You can use my name if you read it. Best Courtney. Thank you very much, Courtney. Please follow up with any other stories that you have. This is a, a series that we will have an exclusive series for Tales from the Hood, the after show. Um, I'm offering that to you to use this as your platform to send in whatever kind of uh, ambulance chaser or not. That's not a term that we're using for this. A paramedic adventures a paramedic tales from the er whatever you want to call them please send in more of those i would love to hear from you and you guys that are listening to this now i hope you enjoyed this again i want you guys to follow up with emails that you've sent in this is a great place for us to be able to keep the tales from the hook going but in a different way in a um an exclusive way to patreon so this is exclusive exclusive content and that i want to provide to you guys and get you guys to hear more from our listeners our community our patrons our you know our family so if you want to be a part of that, affirmative murder at gmail.com, we can do this uh, TFTH after show or TFTH updates. Either of those will work just fine. And then I know specifically what it's about. So if you want to write into this Patreon exclusive content, TFTH updates or TFTH after show, either one of those would be great. And, uh, you know, let me know what a story from another episode inspired you. Or if you're the person that sent in an email and you have a follow up to a question that me and Fran asked. This is the place to do it. Affirmative murder at gmail.com. Thank you guys so much for being patrons. Thank you guys so much for the support. We cannot continue to live this dream of a podcast life without people like you existing in the world. So we're very thankful. But until next time, Halvito saying. Find the top brands, inspiration, and great value you need to own your style now at Macy's VIP sale. Use your coupon or Macy's card and take an extra 30% off spring trends and updates. Plus, get 15% off this season's go-to beauty, skincare, fragrances, and more. And don't miss out on limited-time specials. Going on now at Macy's. Savings off regular sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply.